Hi, I'm Joel Wilson with Applied Controls. Today I'm going to walk you through a demo of iSense, which is Mettler Toledo's online database to take care of and manage your digital sensors. I'm going to do this uh, through my laptop, and uh, uh, the program is free to download. I'll show you that. But you can use a USB and go right into your laptop or desktop, whatever it might be. Or you can use this iLink, and you can hook it up to your, your uh, digital sensor and then Bluetooth that to your laptop or if you want to do it on your iPhone or iPad. It makes it really easy to calibrate your sensors. So here we go, show you a little bit about it and uh, how it works. So this is iSense. This is the software. It's free to download. Uh, you can go to Mettler Toledo's website, mt.com. You can type in iSense, I-S-E-N-S-E, -E, in the search bar and you can download that for free. And so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sensor, I'm going to take the Bluetooth adapter, and I'm going to plug this in, or screw this in. And now you can see this thing is trying to connect. So I can come up here to settings with my mouse, hit settings, come over here to Bluetooth devices. It has found that, the iLink. So I'm going to sit there and hit connect, and we're going to connect. And so that simple and easy, we have connected. Now as we come here, it has found my sensor. We can see that we're dealing with a 3250i, and we have the part number as well as the serial number. So we're getting the readings, and we can see uh, you know, our dynamic lifetime indicator. It's showing us we have 380 days of life with this sensor. Our uh, adaptive calibration timer is at 14 days, and our time to maintenance at 30. We can also see our last calibration, what the slope, what the off zero point was, and uh, we can see everything's in green, so it should be good. Now if we come down here on these four keys, we have a sensor check. I love this function about iSense because you can get on here if you're having issues with the pH probe, put this in a 7 buffer as it asks for us to do, we hit perform check, and it's going to run diagnostics on this sensor. And it will tell you if the sensor is good, if the sensor has some issues, might need to be calibrated, might need to be cleaned. But it's a simple and easy way to, for you to know if you have issues, truly have issues, with your pH sensor when it's out there. So we got a green check mark. Everything is good to go. There's really no further actions unless you wanted to. Um, so uh, this sensor is good. We'll come back to a calibration here in a minute, but we're going to come down here to our next one, the details. We can see these details of autoclaving, uh, our clean in place, uh, steam in place up at the top row. Um, this is a brand new sensor, so it hasn't gone through that. But if it ever did go through something like that, it would come up on this screen here. Our slope's good. Our zero point's good. Our maximum temperature it stores at uh, 103 degrees is the max temperature that it saw. Glass impedance, reference impedance are good. And then it also keeps your time of operation for a sensor. This has never been installed. Uh, we're at zero days. If we come to information, we can tag it if we want to of where it goes in the plant. Could be, say, you know, plant one boiler, for example. You can uh, customize that however you want so that when you do your calibrations, it'll show up on, on the, the, the form. So the next thing we're going to walk through is a calibration. So you see our, our, our three uh, keys over here. We're going to hit this middle key, which is a calibration and maintenance. And so we're going to calibrate our sensor using the iSense. Uh, I'm going to check my settings. I've got it on two point, which I want. I've got my buffer tab set. If you wanted to put the lot, you can do that as well. So to calibrate, it's asking you to place in buffer one. We're going to rinse that off, clean it off, and we're going to put this in buffer one. So I've got it in my buffer one, which for this example is a seven, and we hit continue. And so this is going to go through the calibration. So we're calibrating to our first point. Again, it's a 7 buffer. And uh, as this progresses along, it'll uh, give us the OK and say that we're ready to go. And we are good to go. So we've calibrated to our first buffer, which is a 7. So now I'm going to clean this off. I'm going to dry it off. I'm going to get my second buffer. So we've got that set, we're in our second buffer, and we're going to uh, start uh, to go through our, our, our calibration process. 
Now, if you just want to do a one point, you could do a one point and be done with that. Um, but uh, for today's purpose, again, we're doing a two point. And uh, we are done calibrating to our four. So we've uh, calibrated our sensor. And, and here we have our current uh, calibration points, our, uh, our, our last adjustment, what that was, what our current adjustment is. And uh, we want to sit there and adjust the sensor. And after you do that, you adjust the sensor. We're going to clean it off. So now we've adjusted the sensor, everything is finished. If you wanted to uh, show your report, you hit click report and it generates us a report that we can see what that calibration was, uh, what our current adjustment is off of that two point cal, our slope and uh, our, our zero point. And save that to uh, you know a database online, you can print it off and file it. So that's how you calibrate a sensor using the iLink uh, Bluetooth adapter. If you don't want the Bluetooth adapter, they also make a USB connection that you can hook right into your laptop, your desktop. It still has the same connection to be able to hook up your sensors to and, and perform the same functions as a Bluetooth with the USB port. After we've done calibrating, if we wanted to clean it, we can clean the sensor and reset the TTM once you've cleaned that sensor and you're good to go. Under that same tab, if you wanted to deactivate it, you can deactivate a sensor. It will no longer function for you. So I would recommend not doing that unless you're 100% done with that sensor and ready to trash it, dispose of it. So after we've calibrated, one thing I like to do, I like to come back here to my last calibration point and I want to run that sensor check again just to make sure we had a good cal. So we put it in that sense, uh, 7 buffer. I'm going to perform check again. We have a green check mark over here. Uh, it was everything was good, but I just want to make sure that the cow didn't throw it out of whack. That way, when I install it, I have confidence that I'm giving the giving the right readings out there. So it checked well. The sensor is good, ready to go. At this point, you know, since you've already pulled it out of the system and you got one replaced, we can just cap this guy. We have it sitting here, ready on the shelf, and when something uh, were to need to be changed the next time we can grab this guy and he, we have the confidence that he's ready to go. So the other cool feature about this, that third button on the bottom is a measurement and configuration. So this works as a, a, a true transmitter. So if you wanted a transmitter, you could use this iSense, have it there in your lab or, or the shop. And uh, we're getting a, a, a reading here. We are in the 7 pH and the thing is reading right on at 7 pH. We can see our glass and our reference impedance are both green. Everything's looking good. But that's iSense. You can sit here in a matter of an hour and calibrate, you know, 10, 15 sensors all at one time in one setting. And the cool thing is you're in a great climate controlled area and not outside where you're having to deal with the elements of temperature, of wind. Well, I hope you found that demo of the iSense software beneficial. As always, if you have any questions, you can always reach me by email at jwilson at ac-acsi.com or you can call me on my phone 405-255-9440. Thank you so much for watching today's demonstration and let me know how I can help.